Welcome to Tech Primers. How does it feel when you don't have to restart the process when you do a config change? When you do a config change or a config um, change inside your project, you don't have to deploy that into your um, production machine or your UAT machine. How does it feel like, right? So there are frameworks for that. That is what we are going to see in this particular video. So in this particular video, we are going to use uh, Spring Cloud Config Server and then see how we can do config deployment without even having to restart your process but your changes should be picked up on the fly right so that is what we are going to see so in order to do that uh, we need to understand how the config server works right so spring has something called uh, spring cloud config server so in order to use that particular framework we have to follow this architecture design pattern so we need to design a configuration client basically that is going to be a uh, Spring Boot application and that will be communicating with the config server from the config server it needs to redirect to the github repository so what to, what is going to happen is from the config client we are going to access the uh, properties from a github repository okay so literally it can be a git or a svn repository <coughs> which we can configure okay i am going to show uh, you the example of a, uh, how to access it from a github repository okay so basically the config client is going to be a spring boot application the config server is going to be a spring cloud config server library inside a spring boot application so that is also a spring boot application but i'm going to add some um, spring cloud uh, config server dependencies okay and the config client is going to have the config client dependency and these are now going to access a property file from the git repository so this could be a github repository or your svn repository or anything so i'm going to have a I'm going to create a git repository locally and then I'm going to access that from the config server. Okay. So if I change something inside the app name or property, it should get reflected, right? How does it get reflected? So we created uh, this flow, but let's say we are going to change something in the git repository. How does the process know, right? So if, um, if it is like every time the client has to go to the server and get the data, that is a performance hit, right? So what uh, the Spring Cloud team has done is they have created the server and the GitHub repository. So this will be loaded only once. Okay. So the config server is going to load only once. Uh, uh, so the config client will not go to the server every time. Okay. So in order to bypass that, right? If you want to refresh the latest changes from the properties, you can change the Git repository. And how do we refresh that, right? So in order to do that, so the user has to first. Uh, the flow is like user commits the changes into the app uh, named or properties, right? then the user has to trigger the refresh option on the client so when the user triggers a refresh option on the client the client is now going to go to the server and ask for new information from the git repository so basically it is going to repull the configuration and it is going to refresh the properties so that the client will have the latest properties so if you notice here we have not redeployed anything we just changed the property file without even having to restart the application but um, this will not work for every type of uh, scenario because there could be some property files uh, which uh, for example database connections you cannot uh, uh, change the database connections like these right so you can have application specific properties um, in the gate repository and then we can go and change them okay so that is what we are going to design now so we need to create two different processes uh, so let's go ahead and create them so uh, let's go to the typical uh, spring initializer right so i'm going i'm there already so I'm going to say config, okay? And I'm going to say config uh, server. So I'll create the config server first. So for the config server, we need the dependencies of only the config server, okay? So that is the only thing which we require. We don't need anything else for the config server, right? So I'll just create the, I'll just hit the generate option. So this is going to get generate a config server for me. I have created it now I need a config client as well right so I'm going to create a conflict client basically both are spring boot application that is why we are in the spring initializer so the next uh, thing which I need is the dependencies so I need uh, to expose a rest endpoint so that we can query and see so I need spring MVC. so I have added the spring web uh, the next one we need is the config client so there is something called config client so I'm going to add config client and also we need the actuator endpoints so actuators are um, some uh, rest endpoints created by spring boot automatically okay so for example the refresh which we saw here right this refresh is going to be created by actuator automatically so we just need to add the dependency and the uh, spring boot creates that automatically for us so let's go to and generate the project okay done so we have both the config server and the conflict client created let me unzip them
right so both are unzipped so let me open that in the IntelliJ right config client right so I'm opening the config client and also I'll open the let me maximize this and parallelly I'll open the config server right okay so both have got open let's go to the uh, server first okay so if you see the diagram what we have created the server needs to communicate with the git repository so what i'm going to do is this git repository i'm going to create the server itself so i'm going to have this properties inside this itself and i'll just point it to that git repository from the server so when the server comes up it points to that particular git repo it's just the directory url okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the class um, if we go to the pom xml we can see that only one dependency is there which is nothing but the spring cloud config server in order for uh, spring to enable the spring um, config server we need to add an uh, annotation so um, spring is opinionated right so we need always annotations for spring boot to function something or the other so we are going to enable only the config server and that is it we are not going to do anything else uh, so i'm going to say start this particular uh, process in the port number 8980 okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create something called bootstrap.properties so we have never created bootstrap.properties right so bootstrap.properties is the file which is going to get loaded before all the properties are loaded or before all the configurations are loaded okay this is required because we need to add the config uh, server details that is why we need it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give the path of this particular folder itself so if you see here this folder is uh, home slash download slash config server and i've given this path okay that is all i need so i i need to convert this config server into a git repository let's do that later but uh, that is all we need in the server side so our server is ready almost okay let's go to the client side so in the client side we have to do something similar right before that uh, we will create a rest endpoint in the client side right so what i'll do is i'll just create a, a message resource okay i just need some message right so i'm going to create a rest controller because we need to expose this as the rest endpoint so that we can see whether the properties are loaded okay and this url i'll just say rest okay okay and then i'm going to say get mapping go to message so i'm just having a rest endpoint called rest slash message okay and i'm going to return a string okay and this message is going to be a variable which is coming from the git repository so basically this is going to be a field right it's going to be a property so how do we load properties in spring is we do a, a at value right and what we do is we do this right we load the message okay by default what i will do is uh, i'll just say default hello okay so that this particular message is printed so when the process comes up it doesn't fail or else it will say that okay i'm not able to find this property and then it will fail right so i'm just saying that load this as a default property for this message and just print me okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to add the bootstrap dot properties next okay similar to how we added in the uh, server project we need to add the bootstrap dot properties so the for the bootstrap dot properties this needs a different set of properties what we need is uh, we need an application name because that is the name with which it, it is going to identify the property file so from the git repository it need we need to configure this file we need to create this file config client dot properties so that the server is going to get and pick it up okay and also we have to configure the the cloud server url so this is going to be the server's url so we have given the port number as uh, what is the port number 8980 so i am using the same here and for now i am disabling the security so i am just saying management dot security dot enable as false okay so both our uh, client and the server is almost ready however we haven't created that git repository right what uh, this guy is pointing to the server side is pointing to what i will do i'll just convert this whole project itself into a git git repo so for that i need to do a git init okay once i do a git init i need to add this particular file called so i'll create this file first here 
I'm going to create the property file, right? I need to create the config line. That's the name with which we have uh, we created the properties, right? The the config client, right? So I need to <coughs> so I need to create this config dot client, and now I need to commit this file. So in the config dot client, what I'll do is I'll just say message equal to uh, what message do I say? Hi viewers, right? I'm going to do that, and I am going to commit this file. Okay, the file got committed, and this is particularly a Git repository. If you see here, I can do uh, whatever is there. This is just a small repository which we created, and this is the path we have already given inside this particular file, right? That's it. So let's start the uh, server and the client. So I'm going to start the server. Okay, and the next one is I'm going to start the client from the client side. We are done with the changes. We have just exposed one REST endpoint to just print a property. That's it. We are not doing anything fancy here. So if I go to the diagram which we had here, we have created this client with a REST endpoint saying message, and that particular message is coming from the Git repository which we created, and the config server is going to be a, a Spring Cloud config server which is pointing to this particular Git repository with the property file which we changed. Okay, this is all done. So let's see if it is all working first. So the server is up, right? The server is almost up. Yeah, the server is up. Let's see if the client is also up. The client did not come up uh, because I think the there is a port clash. Uh, let me do a server dot port equal to eight nine eight one. Okay, I'll just give a port number here. Server side we had 8980, so I am just making this as 8981 so that we can start at in a different port. Okay, if you notice here, it has already uh, had a log here fetching config from the server. This it has already fetched some config, and if you notice here, it is uh, saying that the config name is config client and it has got something All right. So let's see if it is up. Yeah, the server is up. the client is also up. So let's uh, hit the rest endpoint. point 8981 slash rest slash message so that is the message which we wanted right so if you notice here yeah we got the response and the response is nothing but default which is nothing but the default hello so where did it go so yeah so the default hello came right so rest slash message we got the default hello which is nothing but the default matches which is out there where is that yeah so we have added that uh, so in order to if you notice here this did not bring anything from the uh, server right so because it uh, brought the default message that's it in order to have the client get the re uh, request from the um, server we need to add an annotation called refresh go okay so this is going to pull the message from the server side okay if I restart this client with this change so this is going to take me to the uh, uh, new value which we have added so in the server if you notice they, we created a file called uh, client or properties but I think we didn't commit it right did we commit yeah I think we have to commit it we didn't commit it I need to do a git add git add config uh, client dot properties and then I'll just say commit okay I committed the file so this should be good so now we have committed the file so this file change should now get picked up by the server okay let's go ahead and quickly check it I don't know if I committed before I think I didn't commit before uh, this process started so let me restart the config client so I have added a refresh scope so this refresh scope should now be able to handle that refresh option so if I want to uh, refresh or uh, change the git repository at uh, any point of time I should be able to use this git repo uh, git uh, I should be using this uh, annotation called uh, refresh scope this is going to refresh my config okay from the server side right so let's go to the browser and refresh it so now this should return yeah you notice here this is now returning the hi viewers okay that's what we did right so we added the hi viewers now if you notice in this diagram we are done with this part it is now taking the change from the git repo and showing it here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this git repo and if you notice that it will not change 
okay so i'm going to say hi youtube viewers okay and i'm going to commit this file okay i've committed this file okay if i refresh this option so if you notice here the message is not changing right so if you see the diagram which i had created i said that in order to reflect the new change you have to do a refresh option right so that is what we are going to do now okay we have to hit the refresh option with a post okay so you cannot do that from the browser so what i'm going to do i'm going to do it from the uh, postman so i'll copy the url here and the uh, endpoint for that is refresh so slash refresh so that is what the actuator is doing so i said right there is a dependency which we added called as actuator so that is going to expose this uh, refresh endpoint spring boot identifies that there is a config server dependency and the actuator will automatically route this refresh to the config server okay so i'll just say post what we need to do is we need to just send a empty uh, like a uh, dummy message without any body okay i'm just going to hit the send refresh option so this is going to hit the um, server if you notice here i got a response saying config client dot version so this has um, a config client dot version and whatever message i added it is there i mean the variable names the property names so it says that these two are there okay which is good now let's go and refresh this page and i expect this particular uh, page to have the new message if you notice here yeah we got the youtube viewers okay so you notice right what i did i went and changed this con uh, config client or property and basically this is the git repository so this is the local git repository so uh, whenever i change it and committed it it was not reflecting but when when i hit a refresh option when i gave a post of the refresh option to the client and then i when i refreshed it got updated so that is how the config server works okay so you have a client and a server server will get the changes from the git repository only when you do a refresh so first time it goes and gets it so first time when the client comes up the client asks the server server goes to the git repository and gets it only once but when the client is up right when the client is up and running and you change something in the app name then you have to do a refresh to get that reflected okay that is what we did so this is the concept of spring cloud uh, config server so config server is generally a concept which people are using now in the microservices design pattern where you have different microservices and they can connect to a single config server and that config config server can be connected to multiple git repositories and uh, you change the git repository the microservices is uh, reflecting the new property file so you don't have to even have to do a production release on the uh, actual running app it automatically gets the properties via the config server from the git repository or an svn repository okay so this is how we use a uh, spring cloud config server and um, i'll be uploading this code into the github repository so you can get the sample from there and then use it for uh, yourself you can try that for yourself okay just change the path of the um uh, con get a get repository so i have uh, mentioned that it is in my username slash download slash something it might be different for you you can use yours wherever you have saved the uh, property that get repository whatever file we created right the property file okay so that's it for this particular video hope you liked it uh, meet you again in the next video thank you very much